everybody, my name is James Davies and welcome to Photo Chat Vlog on YouTube. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that you were looking at the Big Clive channel on YouTube with the camera pointing at my desk, but in this episode of Photo Chat Vlog I want to take a look at the Olympus Mew 2, or Stylus Epic as it's called in the USA. I'm going to refer to it from now on in this video as the Mew 2, but if you have a Stylus Epic I understand it's exactly the same. Either way, it's a favourite camera of mine, and although we've looked at some photos taken with it in Season 1, today I wanted to look at the camera itself, and I must apologise in advance too for the quality of the video. This webcam is not HD, but it's all I've got to hand at the moment. So you can see that my poor old Mewtwo is covered in black electrical tape, because after years of great service, it's developed the dreaded light leak. Now the tape covers all of the seals where the camera door shuts, and it does work in keeping the light out, but it makes for a messy, sticky camera. And whilst that can be a badge of honour on a funky old plastic camera, the Mew 2 was a deluxe camera, and it shouldn't have light leaks in the same way that a Holger or a Diana might. Now I got this Mew 2 for a tenner, that's £10, back in 2007. But it wasn't my first one, I actually had a champagne coloured one, and that had a light leak too. I couldn't seem to tape that one up and keep it leak free, so it got sold on eBay for about 99p. There was no point in trying to make a fast buck on a camera that is this desirable, knowing it was leaky. So I was honest, and somebody got it really cheap, and maybe they're having fun with it now. But the one we can see here was much more reliable, and it wasn't until 2014 that it started to show evidence of being leaky. Now you can see here on these two colour photographs that I took in Borthy Guest, I hope I pronounced that right, in Wales, you can see the telltale red flares that show up on colour film when light leaks in at the bottom of the frame. Those are the red bits that don't look like they belong in these pictures. And then you can see on this black and white image of a cigarette packet that I took in Ez in the south of France, how the light leak comes out as white on black and white film. And there's another one in this photograph of a field near Didcot in Oxfordshire. So I retired that camera and I've been shooting a variety of compact cameras since. And I've had some fun with those. But, wait for it, I now have a new Mew 2. This one only cost me a fiver as well. I was walking around my local Saturday market a couple of weeks ago and I saw a guy with a stall with a load of cameras on it. And I quickly glanced across at what he'd got and I saw this one. Since it was only £5, it was a no-brainer. I had to have it, and I bought it there and then. So I thought I'd compare the two cameras, and then show you what I do when I get a new camera to prepare it for its first roll of film. Now looking on the underside of the two cameras, you can see the serial number. Uh, this webcam isn't focusing very well, but we can see on the new one that the serial number is 101559. And on my original one, under the electrical tape, it says 7580735. So my feeling is that my new one is actually older than my old one. You can also see that the new one has Made in Japan embossed into the plastic, and my old one, although it says Olympias Tokyo Japan, has an explanation about it being assembled in China, parts made in Japan. So evidently at some point the production was moved to China. And maybe my new one is a Series 1 and my old one is something like a Series 2. Who knows? You can see that the door on the old one doesn't seem to close very well though. And maybe that was how the light leak was getting in. Anyway, I'm going to keep my original one because of sentimental memories and because it has a case and because I don't know if the new one will actually work. I also noticed one more thing. They both have a slider on the strap, but my original one has a little protrusion on the slider for pressing the film rewind button. Now, normally at the end of the film, it rewinds itself all by itself. It rewinds the film back into the canister. But if for any reason you wanted to do that before you got right to the end of the film, uh, then you need to press the little recessed rewind button. There's no evidence of one of these tabs on the new one so maybe it was added later on after feedback. So what would I do to a camera I had just acquired? Well, the first thing is I'd give it a wipe over. 
Now these antibacterial wipes are nice because they do a good job of cleaning the camera, but they aren't soaked in fluid, so they get it clean without risking making it all wet. It also puts my mind at rest about where the camera has been before I actually acquired it. I got the norovirus earlier in the year after a trip over to visit Iceland. That's the country, not the shop. And since then I'm very picky about how clean things ought to be. If you've never had it, try to avoid the norovirus. I'm going to be on the safe side and give this camera a really good wipe over. Now I'm not cleaning the lens with this wipe, but I will open the lens cover to clean around that part too. Now when you open and close the Mewtwo, you should hear a little mechanical vroom vroom noise. And this doesn't have that. There is a click that you can hear when the plastic parts move across each other, but it's not the mechanical noise that I'm listening for. The mechanical noise is the noise of the lens moving into position, because this lens cover actually turns the camera on, and when that happens, the lens pops out a teeny bit. But this camera, unsurprisingly, has a dud battery. Market store sellers rarely have working batteries in all their cameras, and this one is no exception. So we need a new battery. Now the compartment is easy to open on the Mew 2, and there is the CR123A battery. Now again, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this was the Big Clive channel since I'm whipping out my multimeter here. But this should be a 3 volt battery. If we check it, it's actually showing 2.91 volts, which might seem like almost 3 volts, but evidently isn't enough to keep the camera happy and switched on. So we will put that aside, as it's a dud, and we'll bring over a replacement. Now you'll notice this replacement is unmarked. I did a bit of a hack to get this battery. These cells are sometimes stacked up in multiples in other types of batteries, and I happen to have a 6 volt battery made up of two CR123A cells. Now I'm not going to tell you how I got the cell out because it involved cutting it with a knife and that was a bit of a mess and I don't want to say cut it here only to find that you slice the end of your finger off like I nearly did because the knife slips. It can also be hazardous if you cut the case of the cells that make up these sort of batteries. Uh, it could short out for example if you do that and it's really quite hard to avoid doing that until you really know what you're doing. So take it from me that whilst I might obtain this grey cell very much at my own risk, the best way for you to get one of these cells is to obtain the correct CR123A battery, either in a shop or online. So when I test this battery with a multimeter, it's reading 3.09 volts, which is just a little bit above 3 volts, but it's that extra bit which seems to make the camera a lot happier. So away goes the multimeter, and let's pop in the battery. So we close the compartment, and now when I open it, there is our little noise. And you should be able to see the lens pop in and out. So it's working. Now on the back, you can see it flashing E for empty, because there's no film in it. And there's also the happy battery indicator. So let's get some film into it. I'm not going to clean the inside. It looks okay to me. These are the rubber seals, and I guess if these perish, we might get a light leak. But these don't look too bad. Now, they also don't look too bad on the original one, and that does have a light leak, so I think the light is getting in from somewhere else in the body. Now, the Mew 2 is an automatic camera, so these little pins work with the DX coding on your film to set the film speed in the camera, and we'll look at that in a second. But for testing purposes, I'm just going to use Poundland Agfa Vista Plus, which was readily available until recently in a shop here in the UK called Poundland where most things cost a pound. So sadly the supply of it in the shops has dried up, but I stockpiled a fair bit, so I'm okay with running this roll through quickly to test things. It is a 24 exposure roll. You might wonder, why not use a 36 exposure, because processing costs the same regardless, right? But I want to burn through this and get it tested quickly, and although there are only 12 extra shots on a 36 exposure film, it can make the difference between completing the roll and forgetting about the camera because it's been left in a bag or something because you never got to enter the roll. So I'm happy with getting this one run through nice and quick. Loading it up is pretty simple. You just pop it in like that. And the interesting thing here you can see is that the film is upside down compared to most standard SLRs. So normally the film would be film canister would be on the left going into the right and you can see here that it's on the right going into the left hand side of the camera. That can make a difference if you're doing 
some sort of double exposures and you can see all about that where the pic one set of pictures are upside down and the other are the right way up if you look at my unintentional double exposures video. But for the time being, the way you load this camera is you just pop the tab end of the film down there. Now here is the DX coding on the canister and this pattern means that it's 200 ASA and it somehow registers with these little pins in a combination which the camera understands is 200 ASA. Now, everything seems in order and so after a bit of winding from the camera we have got a one in the display on the back and we're ready to go. So I will give the lens a proper clean with a proper lens cleaning cloth uh, when I get round to taking a picture but what I'm going to do in testing the camera is to attempt to take at least one photo each of a distant thing, a nearby thing, a person, a building, something in bright light something in dull light, something with the flash, something indoors and something with the self timer and so those are all the kind of things that I would expect to see with this camera and all of the features that I would expect to test. It is not a zoom camera so there's actually less to go wrong with it but it is nevertheless a vintage camera and it just could be fundamentally broken. Something like the autofocus just not happy and not working. All I can do is test it get the film developed and decide whether the results are satisfactory or not. But for now, that is my new Olympus Mew 2 and for £5 I've hopefully got a nice little bargain. And of course if not, I haven't splurged tons of money on it. Now after I've shot the pictures and I get the film developed, I'll make a new video of the results and we can see how things turned out. And so we're at the end of the video. Now before I go, I just want to say hi to any new subscribers and of course welcome back to the small amount of people that are already subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot to me that you've looked at my videos and you've listened to me speak. This is an experiment for me and I really appreciate the people who have bothered to check things out. The audience at the time of me recording this is pretty miniature and it would probably be more cost effective for me to just come round to everybody's houses individually and show them the photos in person. But I do want this channel to be a resource and a reference for photographers like me. The fact that you're listening to me right now is a sign that maybe this is worth carrying on with. Who knows? So, there we have my new to me Olympus Mewtwo. If you like what you see, feel free to hit the like button or subscribe to the channel. If you have a comment, please go ahead and write one. Particularly if you have any insider knowledge of the history of the Mewtwo or, of course, the Stylus Epic. Meanwhile, I will see you in the next episode of Photo Chat Vlog.